All right, tell me about the significance of today. Well, today is a very important day because we are closing the door on a failed social policy, i.e. concentrating poor families in warehouses of despair and isolation. And this is the end of that chapter. And the good news is that we have uh, been working since 1994 to relocate the families, providing them choices, and creating healthy mixed-use, mixed-income communities. And the great news is that families are thriving and just doing fabulously well. There's something in here of women's science we disagree with. Well, you know, change is difficult, but on all accounts, based on the research that we've done and that others have done, and then based on personal testimonies that we have received from families who have successfully relocated, and that includes everyone who has lived here, they have said without any question that they love their new homes, they are safer in their new homes, they're excited about the opportunities that being out of the project represents. They're on their way to achieving the American dream. They're working, they're being successful, and they've found great places to live. So, you know, change is always going to raise questions about is it the right thing? Uh, maybe we're overlooking something. And we're paying attention to all of that. But on reflection, there's no question that this is the right direction. And Atlanta, the family, and the nation will be the better for it. Sure, this is a political season in Atlanta. As you well know, some of the mayoral candidates are suggesting, well, this is this birth the political base. Has this disrupted Atlanta politics? Well, you know, there's always going to be debates about various issues. But here's the great news. If the families and citizens are doing well, the base is strong. So clearly, families are moving around. Uh, about 70% of the families um, who have relocated have stayed here in the city of Atlanta. So that they may be moving out of one district or another, but they're still here. But more importantly, they're thriving and being successful. And I think that public service is really all about making sure that the citizens in the city are thriving and doing well. Briefly explain the replacement home project. Briefly explain what was done to those who live here and those who can be replaced. Well, very, very uh, simply, uh, what we do is we provide housing to our spouses, to the families, and the families have the opportunity to choose where they'd like to live. So they'll be looking at the quality of the schools, the quality of the neighborhood, the amenities, being close to the jobs, being close to the church, family, and that type of thing. And they are paying the same amount of rent using the vouchers for rent and utilities as they were paying here, except they have a much broader array of choice, and they are being concentrated in property. What percentage of no. What percentage of people came back to the original home? Well, you're now talking about the uh, mixed income yes, yes. Uh, revival. Were they able to come back? Well, we don't currently have a plan to uh, revitalize this community. We're going to wait about a year because, as you know, the financial and real estate markets are very fragile right now. But we're going to go out with a uh, request for proposal soliciting the development community and the investor community to do additional mixed-use, mixed-income communities. And so everyone who was living here and living throughout the city will have a, an opportunity when the communities are built back to uh, come and sign up and have an opportunity to live here as well as any of the other uh, mixed income communities that have developed across the city. You called this a failed experiment. Why did it take 40 years to realize that it was a failed experiment? Well, it's interesting. When the program first got started in the 30s, uh, that was the right solution at the time because uh, President Roosevelt wanted to do it on volume. They were eliminating terrible wooden uh, shanties and slums, and he wanted to do a jobs program because it was right after the Depression. So it worked probably for a good 20 to 30 years. 
But as society changed and as the policies changed um, and they lowered the standards because the, the focus and the emphasis changed, then it really became a program that was concentrating all of the poor uh, and the, the standards kept going lower and lower. When the program started in the 30s, everyone was required to work. Everybody was required to uh, take care of their places and on and on. And, you know, I think we shouldn't be looking back fondly at solutions that were done 70 years ago because, you know, you would expect that over a seven-decade period, things change. You know, and then we had the advent of uh, drugs, and, you know, society changed quite dramatically. But we believe that if we can serve the families by closing the affordability gap, and we can with this new approach, and the families are in healthier environments because environments matter, that we will be much better off as a society because the families will be able to prosper and thrive. And I think that's why we have uh, any government support for these types of programs. Look, if we can make it here, what are we going to do out there?